specific notion of the nude was completely altered with the arrival of the, the Western canon, shall we say, even by the time Cook got there, it had been completely constructed by the first visits from the, the first ever navigators that came from the West into the Pacific. My name is Rosanna Raymond and I am an activator fabricator. So I primarily use the body, spoken words and, um, and time and space. It was completely framed through the West and it has completely altered our own ways of looking at our bodies, but a lot of my understanding about how we looked at our bodies, it's more a genealogical body. I suppose my perspective on this, on the, the Western gaze is, has come through becoming aware of, of how women are looked at in general, whether it's through a Pacific gaze or a Western gaze, the sexualization of the body and I actually worked within the fashion industry for years and so I think that's when I realised that my body was treated as an exotic other and this is when I realised that this was quite problematic <laughs> actually because it certainly wasn't exotic to us, it was, it was completely normal. My mother definitely brought me up taking me to art galleries and, and that's possibly where I first saw all these, these paintings of the female figure and they were very voluptuous and, and very well-rounded and I suppose as I got older I mean you're taught how to look and view these these things and what is beautiful and obviously a lot of times my body wasn't sort of matching up to what is considered beautiful let alone it wasn't there and it definitely wasn't covered in tatao and it definitely wasn't beautiful reflections of what I saw around me on my everyday life. When I came back to New Zealand I was also looking at the mana that is placed on our woman and our society through my Samoan grandmother, through my aunties. These are big powerful women but I was looking at our mythologies and looking at, at the woman that I, and the way that we looked at our bodies pre-contact. I was just like this has got to stop. My body is not bad, it is not sinful, it, I became a mother, it is a procreative state, it, it is beautiful, my round bits are gorgeous, these breasts have suckled life and I thought, so as I was starting to develop as an artist I started to, I suppose, push back at, at what I felt was an incredibly, you know, pale, stale, male environment that, that was not fully understanding there was many other ways of looking at a body. So in Aotearoa and the Pacific, it's very different. They read my body very differently. I carry the markings that, that are as a 5,000 year old unbroken cultural practice. So this is this act of collapsing time and space where I actually can, I have the ancestors literally embedded on my skin and a lot of the people in Aotearoa, they can read these, these messages, they can understand that it's not exotic, they understand that that is part of a cultural heritage that, that actually demands responsibilities, it demands me to ensure that, that I am not just working as an individual, that I'm working within a cultural sphere. And there's no such thing as a naked body when it's fully tataoed with its ancestral presence. So I just hope that, that my work will sort of keep reaching out and, and teaching not just myself, but teaching those around me that, that actually it's okay. You can have cuddly bits, those bits are great. And that it's, it's, it's all right, it's all right to look, it's all right to enjoy. In fact, it's all right to even be exotic because we know that that's not exotic to everyone and, and that it shouldn't be something that holds us back, it should be something that propels us right to the future. That is the challenge within institutionalised spaces and how we unpack and decolonise this body, this space and, and, and how art can do that.